Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Thread and Malware session. And in this session, you will expect a talk on the network, uh, internet wide uh, threat and the new types of uh, malware. So let's first welcome our speaker, Yi Hai, about uh, her talk will be about um, a malicious takedown process. Good afternoon. My name is Ihan, and I'm going to, to present our work uh, regarding uh, understanding and analyzing uh, malicious domain takedowns. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Pong, Professor Arwes, Professor Leo, Professor Wang, Tasneem, Shanhang, Suyan, and Bojun. So let's start by defining uh, the takedown process. So the takedown is actually the process of taking down the domain from its currently registered owner due to the violation of um, acceptable use policy. Uh, violations may include malware distribution, pharmaceutical um, trading, and copyright infringement. Um, so the main goal of to take down a domain is to disrupt the malicious traffic. However, there are some minor or some sub goals to that, which include um, show warning notice um, or notify infected host, and also uh, mimic the operation of the command and control uh, in order to, pro to, pre to prevent the botnet from trying to connect to another domain. So, um, there is little information available about the takedown operation and their effectiveness, so that's what motivates our project. Um, so our research goal is to understand the takedown process. Uh, for example, what happens to the, to the domain after it has been taken down, and also how long does it stay take, taken down. Uh, also, to, we were interested also in assessing the security and the reliability of the current takedown operations. Um, finally, we set some recommendations for more effective takedown. Um, so, how are domains taken down? So, it starts with administrative aspects or administrative steps in which the takedown requester sub fi file an acceptable use of policy complaint or obtain a court order to enforce the registry or the registrar to take down the domains. In order to execute these orders, um, some technical actions should be considered. Um, for example, uh, the, the technical actions include either sinkholing the domain in which includes changing the DNS configuration. The domain will be still resolvable, however, we redirect the traffic to another host. Um, delisting, or de another method is delisting, in which uh, the registration, uh, in which it changed the DNS registration, the DNS regis status, so the domain will not be resolvable in that case. Uh, another rare case we observe is set the domain uh, in a reserve list. So this will be unresolvable and doesn't have any who is active information. And at the same time, uh, it will not be available in the public pool of available domains. So let's start by looking at the sync calling process as a method of takedown. Um, assume that we have a client, that an, an infected actually client, uh, who tries to connect to a malicious domain. Uh, to, so the, the normal resolution uh, starts by the client requesting the DNS recursive resolver to resolve the domain, which the, then the query is forwarded to the root DNS server. And the third step, we, the answer is returned to the recursive resolver. Then the query is forwarded to the dot .com DNS, resolver, DNS server which include uh, a, a name server record for that domain. Let's assume the name server is ns.malicious.com. The name server is, the name server is then returned to the recursive resolver, and then the recursive resolver, the query is forwarded to the authoritative DNS server, and then it will return the IP, the malicious IP address, 
And uh, finally, the, the malicious IP address is returned to the client, and the client is connected to the infected host. However, in the sync calling, it aims to change the DNS resolution in which the malicious.com uh, name server record is changed to, for example, a sinkhole name server, let's assume ns.sinkhole.com. The answer is returned to their cursive resolver, and then the query is forwarded to the sinkhole name server, which will return a safe IP, and then the infected host will be saved by, saved by connected to uh, a safe host. Uh, there are some minor variation of that, but I mean the main process is similar to uh, as illustrated here. The other method uh, to take down uh, domains is through delisting. Uh, in delisting, the domain will be unresolvable and would, it, would not have an active record in uh, the DNS system. And that is obtained by setting the server hold or cl client hold values for the EPP status code. So it's important to note that these status codes are not exclusively used in takedown operations, and uh, they are also used in, um, uh, in, in normal life cycle of the normal domains. Uh, however, we, uh, we built an algorithm in order to identify takedown cases from these. So uh, here is a bit, the bit pr we provide here the big picture of the life cycle of taking down domains. We start with a set of available domains, and let's assume that they have been maliciously used. Then a takedown request that has been submitted, which caused the domain to be either sinkholed or delisted. In some case, the do domain will start to be sinkholed and then delisted. As long as the domain owner keep renewing the domain, then the domain will st remain taken down. Once they stop renewing the domain, the domain will be expired. And then it will be available for purchase for anyone to register that malicious domain. In some very rare cases, once the domain is expired, it will become reserved and it will not be available for purchase and will not be active in the DNS or have host, active host information. So the, the tan box represents the states that, be considered, that consider the domain to be taken down. So our approach, uh, we start with the data collection process in which we collected a set of domains from blacklists and then we collected a set of sinkholes, IPs and name server sinkholes. Then we perform a reverse lookup to collect all the domains that has been pointing to at least one of these name servers during their lifetime, one of these sinkholes during their lifetime. So in total, we collected one million domains. For these one million domains, we collected passive DNS information from Farsight and also we collected who was information, historical who was information from 360. So we collected now the data set, now it's for the analysis. Um, we analyzed the passive DNS information to calculate the sinkhole duration. And also we, analyze, we built an algorithm to analyze who is data to identify taking down domains through delisting. And then in the case for uh, the domain that start to be sinkholed, then it uh, become on hold, we, um, we extended the takedown, takedown duration by the expiration date of the hold record. In total, we ended up with uh, 625K taking down domains, which we built our analysis on. So um, this Venn diagram shows the distribution of our data set. So the red circle and the, the red region and the green region represents the listed and sinkhole domains and their intersection with the blacklist. Um, for, uh, then we do some analysis on the taking down domains. So we are uh, concentrating here on the sinkhole duration we can see here that 
so we do the measurement by sinkhole operator and by TLD registry. So on the left, um, we can see that GoDaddy and Namecheap have a short, relatively sh in general, have relatively short period of sinkholing, uh, mainly less than a year. Um, and also we can notice that the FBI and Microsoft usually sinkhole their domains for a very long period of time, in average three years. Um, that could be due, bec due, due to their ability to have um, to waive the registration fee. Uh, another reason that they, that could be due to their involvement in taking down uh, pervasive malicious campaigns. Um, looking at uh, the takedown duration by different TLDs, we can see on the right that the info and .org usually take the, down the domain for longer period. Um, that could be for different reasons. One of them is that .org uh, have that policy that will keep the domain taking down even after expiration um, until further notice from the court. Um, other reasons could be include, could be that the domain take the domains involved in the in these TLDs were um, involved in long lasting campaigns, which make the sinkhole actor uh, sinkhole them for longer period. So, uh, for main findings of our project, um, in general. 56% uh, of the domains are available for purchase. And we also observe that 14% per of these domains become available in less than 10 months of their takedown. We consider this time period very short uh, because most likely uh, infected host wouldn't have a chance to uh, be cleaned up. Um, some other uh, observation is that we observe that some malicious domains have been re-registered again maliciously and used maliciously. Um, other, other observation is that we were able to hijack a taking down domain and, point, and have the traffic pointed to our server. Uh, more details in the next slide. And also we observe that expired name servers um, uh, led to the traffic of around 30K domains to be under the control of the new owners. Also the details in the next slide. So here are the details of our hijacking experiment in which we, are, uh, we were able to uh, ta uh, take over a domain that was initially taken down by the FBI. Uh, the domain is carders.org. When the FBI take down the, took down the domain, they utilized Amazon, Amazon Route uh, 53 servers to, con to manage the DNS records. So on the right, we can see the DNS settings um, as based on p passive DNS records. Um, however, once the domain was, um, the, uh, the account at Amazon, the FBI accounts at as Amazon, appear to be activated, uh, deactivated upon the expiration of the domain. Uh, at the same time, the DNS information wasn't cleared up from the .org registry, which led to the dot, for, for that domain, carders.org have dangling DNS records or stale DNS records on the TLD, dot, on the .org TLD. So we tried to So we, we tried to um, take advantage of that and signed up with Amazon Route 53. And we're successful to make Amazon assign uh, one of the name servers in the, blue, in the green box to us that matches one of the name servers at the .org TLD. And then we, make it, we set an A record to sign it to our web servers. This issue has been re reported and resolved. Uh, another, another observation is expired name server. So Configure Working Group uh, used three sinkholes to uh, take over uh, dot, um, Configure Botnet. Uh, 
um, these domains, uh, uh, cwgsh.com.net.org, were expired on February 2011. These domains were then repurchased by multiple parties multiple times. So um, making the, and as of July 2018, th around 30K domains were pointing to these name servers. Um, so, and we can see that the, some of these domains, it's some of the, these sinkhole domains were actively used by the new owner. So we can see that um, the two A records are set and observed in July 2018 uh, with a new IP addresses and also with a new subdomains. So, um, and this issue was also, up, this, uh, Domain, these thing called domains belongs to all the .info uh, TLD. We reported this issue to the .info TLD registry to resolve this issue. Uh, uh, to conclude our presentation, um, we, we um, uh, studied uh, the taking down domain process and find some loopholes in it. Uh, so we, and we also recommend to set some specific policies to regulate the takedown procedures. These policies include um, requesting uh, uh, sinkhole operators to uh, frequently check the DNS configuration. Also, in terms of the sync duration of the sinkhole and the, what happens to the domain after the release, we suggest some, we have some suggestions. First, for, domain in, um, for domains um, involved in malware distribution, we suggest that they remain sinkholed until no more traffic is released. And for other domains that are involved in other type of, of illicit activities, we suggest to take other uh, factors into account before releasing them. These factors include the domain popularity, once it was malicious, and the domain current traffic, uh, as well as the type of the malicious activity the domain was involved on. Okay. Thank you for your attention, and we can take questions. What is the ownership of this takedown domain, and who is responsible to uh, deploy this kind of uh, policy yeah. for, to guide the yeah. takedown process? Yeah, nice question. Uh, actually, um, uh, the domain ownership depends on what is specified in the court order. So if the court order specified transferring the ownership to, for example, the takedown operator, then the, that will, who will be the legal ownership? But if the court order just requested the TLD to take actions, then there's, it will be taken out from the attacker, but no ownership will be transferred to the call operator. Yeah. This is the speaker. Thanks.